Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy are you, O Lord, gracious and good. And as we gather around your word that you have so graciously given to us out of your goodness, as we stand around it and bring our attention to bear upon it, I pray that the words of my mouth and all of our thoughts and prayers are pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Of all the images that come to mind when we hear the name Jesus, I wonder how many of us picture an action hero. Anyone? How many of us, when we think of the Bible, think of it as an action film screenplay? Maybe only if you're encouraged to do so? <laughs> I don't. I didn't know exactly what you might say, but it doesn't strike me that that's first and foremost in our minds. And yet when we read the Gospel of Mark, for example, it certainly can feel that way. There are four Gospels, of course, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In Matthew and Luke, for example, Jesus is not born right away. In Luke, he's not born until chapter 2. In Matthew, he's not born until chapter 1, verse 18 to 23. In Mark, however, in chapter 1 of Mark, in just 25 verses in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is... Baptized, tempted by Satan, calls four disciples, preaches a sermon, casts out demons, and stays late and up late into the night, healing the whole city's worth of sick people in front of the door of the house he's staying in. 25 verses of chapter 1. All of that. Action everywhere. And when Mark describes that action of Jesus, he uses action words like immediately and just as and at once and as soon as. Always something happening right after the next thing that happened. And I don't know, maybe that's Mark's way of showing us that Jesus has a lot of stuff to do and doesn't have much time to do it. Or maybe it's because Jesus is connecting with us because our lives can feel that way. Always something happening, action and activity as soon as I get this sick child home from the doctor, dinner has to get put on the table before this child goes to the soccer practice, and immediately after that's done, I have to run over and check on my aging parent, and just as that gets done, uh, I have to be at church for the meeting in the evening. I, and oh, by the way, I get to do that again tomorrow, and the day after that, and the day after that. Maybe life is full of action both for us and Jesus, and that's why he works at that pace. Regardless of that, or what the reason may be, it makes what Jesus does right after that so significant. So our scripture for today is one single verse. This may never happen again. One scripture verse is our reading today, and it's on your yellow insert. So let's get it out. We'll read it together. It's Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And so it comes right on the heels of those 25 verses of activity. Let's read this together. Early in the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. If you want to hang on to that, there's, on the flip side is some words for the message that I want to share today, but what did Jesus do in the midst of all that activity? He prayed. Where did he pray? In a deserted place. And when did he pray? Early in the morning. That's right there. I even underlined some of those words. This is not to say that there's anything necessarily sacred about the early morning though if you are an early riser, you probably believe that there is something sacred. 
This is not Jesus' underhanded way of telling us that we should all get up early in the morning. Rather, the emphasis is on alone. Jesus got up early in the morning because that was the time he could be alone. That's what the deserted place is a reference to. It's not to the desert, but a place where Jesus could be alone. So what did Jesus do? In the middle of all of that activity, he went out of his way to get away in order to pray. And that's our theme today, prayer. Today is week two of our sermon series. I left my book in my office. It's called The Walk, and it's based on a book by Adam Hamilton by the same title, If you are in one of the small groups, then you are walking through that book chapter by chapter over these six weeks. The focus of this sermon series is spiritual fitness. We talked last week about how there's all kinds of emphasis on getting in shape physically, but what about our spiritual shape? We define spiritual health as being confident, mature, and knowledgeable about our faith in Christ. And we said that's important because, as we just saw, Jesus is on the move. He's moving, always on the go. And if we are going to keep up with him and follow him as his followers, we have to be in shape, in good spiritual shape. So, each week of this series, we are introducing a spiritual exercise. And if we practice these spiritual exercises we will grow spiritually healthy and we will be more likely to follow Christ in the way that he desires. So last week, our first spiritual exercise was worship. You remember that, worship. Making time for what we're doing today, communal worship with one another, coming together at a designated time and place to worship as a body. We said this is the lifeblood of our faith. It's the blood, that, the heart that pumps blood to the rest of, of, of our faith walk. And if this is, this is the foundation that anchors everything on which we stand. And we handed out last week a spiritual challenge journal. You made a promise during worship to bring that with you in worship. So if you have your spiritual challenge journal, I look for mine. Mine is in in the office, I think. I I set things down and then can't, I keep, lose track of them. But, so open up your spiritual challenge journal. The assignment for this week was to come to worship today. You did it. We're going to ease into this thing. Do one push-up, done. Check it off. So if you have your spiritual challenge journal, initial it. Yeah, initial that right there. You came to worship today on March 8th. Done. Got that done. We'll have another challenge here in a moment. Today we want to add to that prayer, specifically thinking about what is prayer, why is prayer important, and how might we pray. First, what is prayer? Adam Hamilton in his book essentially defines prayer as a daily check-in with God. I like that. A daily appointment with God. How many of you call your parents? Check in with your parents. Yep. How, many, how many of you check in with your children? It's like that, right? It's like that. Check in, email, pick up the phone, text message. How are we doing? Everything okay? Right? That, that's what it, it's, it's doing the same thing with God. And there's benefits to this. There's not just obviously spiritual benefits, which we'll talk about, but there are also emotional and practical benefits as well. Almost 10 years ago, there was a study that came out of the University of Notre Dame called about flourishing in the vocation of ministry. How do we flourish and how do we define flourishing in in this vocation of ministry? And in part, the study found that people in ministry who spend 10 minutes just 10 minutes a day in what they considered to be prayer reported being less stressed, sleeping better, and overall happier than people who did not take that 10 minutes to pray. 
I mean, there's just many, many benefits. And those are all ours for the taking as well. That we can flourish and thrive in our own lives of ministry, whatever capacity that may be. But for that to happen, several things are important. First, we have to be intentional. Jesus was intentional about getting up early in the morning and going to a deserted place. That all required his planning and execution. And I think that's important for us. If God and checking in with God is is important to us, if it's going to be a priority for us, each of us has to be intentional too. Nobody can do that for us. We are the best advocates for ourselves. We have our best interest in heart and in mind more than anybody else can for us. And the good news is we can make that a priority because we always have a way of finding time to do what really matters to us. It it will happen. We spend time where we want and value spending time. And, And we may have to schedule it. We may have to schedule it and give ourselves a ping or an alarm to remember to do it. We may have to schedule it like we do every other uh, thing in our lives, but there's time for that. The scripture said that Jesus got up early in the morning, but it could just as easily have said he stepped away from the computer screen and went to a deserted place, or he cut lunch short to go to a deserted place. It requires our intentionality. And we also have to be intentional about the place. Jesus went to a deserted place. In the same way, we should have a place where we are going for this daily check-in with God. Now, it can be the same place every day. The benefit of that is that it can become a habit, and the more things become habitual, the more sustainable they are over time. In, In every house that we have lived in, I have in my mind designated a chair in a room that has been the chair where I pray or have a check-in with God. It's not off limits to everybody else. They can sit in the chair too. They may not even know that that's the chair that I go to. But it is a place that I name as my own. Just like I have a place where I run, bike, and swim, so there's a place where I pray. And it's almost as though your body uh, gets used to that. As you get near the place, it, it, it can figure out, oh, well, I'm going to sit down now and, and we're going to be about checking in. Muscle memory. Right? And that place where we choose also should be quiet. It should be quiet. Jesus went to the deserted place because it was away from the people who were there in his life. The place where we go for our check-in with God should be quiet because prayer is as much about listening as it is about speaking. It's about removing the noise and the clutter so that we can listen for the heartbeat of God in ourselves and in those things around us. One of the things that I like about taking yoga and learning about yoga, studying yoga, is that it has helped me connect with my Christian faith in in, in an even richer way. It's another way that I connect deeper with my Christian faith for this reason, for this example. I went into yoga thinking that it was about physical stretching. And as I'm, I, I, I was doing some research and read that this is for all the men in the sanctuary too, that men, especially as we age, the more flexible we are, the, the better off we are as we age. It may be the same for women. I was reading this about men though, so it particularly piqued my interest. What I found in yoga though is yoga is not about doing, uh, contorting your body into crazy postures like standing on your head, uh, but it is also that. Uh, It is really about stilling the fluctuations of the mind. That's one of the first sutras in in, in yoga, is stilling the fluctuations of the mind. And I like that because my mind is always racing. It's always running 100 miles an hour with ideas or with things that I think I need to do or things that I wish I'd done differently or all kinds of other worries and concerns. And that's what prayer is. Jesus said, To to Peter in Matthew 16, set your mind on heavenly things and not on earthly things. And prayer is about removing that earthly clutter so that we can receive a word 
from God. And it's important. This daily check-in with God is important because it, it helps create, it helps to transform us into people that are fully spiritual. That's the goal. One of my favorite quotes that my dad handed down to me was from the Greek philosopher Aristotle. And Aristotle said that we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is not a virtue as much as it is a habit. And I, I like that. I like the truth in that, that we are the sum total of our decisions and choices and behaviors. I consider myself to be a runner. Not because I have trophies or medals or have uh, sh particular shoes or clothing, but because I give myself to the task of running over and over and over. Didi is an, is an organist. She is not someone who plays the organ. She is an organist because she's given herself to the craft and the habit of, of playing the organ again and again and again. And it's that way with our spiritual lives. When we... When the more we pray and the more that this check-in becomes habitual, we move from being people who pray to praying people. We, we move from people who worship to being worshipful people. We are who we are based on what we do, what our behavior. And so we take this mountaintop experience from Sunday morning and extend it throughout the week to the next mountaintop experience. And, and there's consistency as we move through our lives. And that, and that daily checking with God is also important because it makes sure that we're not running in vain. We're not running in vain. Jesus was sent here to do the will of God, to do the will of God. And even up to the very end, he prayed, Lord, not my will be done, but thy will be done. And I believe that he took time out of, those, of all of the activity that he, in which he was engaged it was his way of saying, Lord, I'm here to do your will, and I'm moving fast and furiously through this world. I want to make sure that I'm moving in the direction that is desirable to you. Paul, the Apostle Paul, did the same thing in Galatians chapter 2. He says after his conversion, he went up to the brothers in Jerusalem and laid before them his testimony of his conversion to make sure that he was not running in vain. Now, prayer does that for us slows us down, allows us to, to open ourselves to God and say, God, here's what we're doing. Is this pleasing to you? Am, am I moving in the direction that you desire for me? So that's why prayer is important, this daily check-in with God. And how do we do it? Well, there's a couple strategies to take with us. The first thing we have to do, the first thing when it comes to how we pray is we have to commit to it. That's number one. We have to want it. And you know this from your own life. Nothing happens unless it's really desired. And conversely, what you really desire is what you end up doing. We, me too. We, we, it's for all of us. So number one, we have to commit to it. So here is the assignment for this week. Remember, we are building a spiritual exercise workout regimen. Well, number one is come to worship every Sunday. Starting this week now, you get Sundays off. Sunday's a freebie. But starting tomorrow, we're, we, the challenge is to give 10 minutes a day for a daily check-in with God. Right? That's it. 10 minutes a day. Now, be kind to yourself. If you've never done this kind of thing before and you skip Tuesday because you forget, don't beat yourself up. Come back Wednesday. Also, be realistic. Don't have your check-in time with God early in the morning if you're not an early riser. Work with your own personality and schedule. And use the church if that helps. And we are always here, and there are a lot of quiet places around this building during the day. So use this as your special place on the way to work or on the way home from work. Your, your uh, 10 minutes should not be multitasking time, though. It should not be driving to work. That's driving to work time. And it should not be uh, cleaning the house time. That's cleaning the house time. This is special time set aside to receive from God. Okay, so after we set aside that 10-minute time, uh, a good prayer time, a check-in time, can have three sections. First, some concern for God. Last week we said that worship is about cultivating gratitude. 
And so we, should, we could easily start our check-in time with God by saying thank you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, 18 says, Pray without ceasing, giving gratitude in all things and all circumstances. So, if you notice in your spiritual prayer journal, challenge journal, there are five blanks, five blank lines for each day of this week. During your check-in time, you can just spend that whole time saying thank you for five things in your life. Thank you for my health today. Thank you for a good night's sleep. Thank you for a really good a conversation with this person. Uh, thank you for this unexpected blessing. Write those down. Be specific. You can use the book that way. But say thank you. Like cultivate gratitude. Secondly, a, a, a good check-in time should have a concern for ourselves, a prayer for ourselves. Several years ago, I read a book on Benedictine spirituality or Christian spirituality from a Benedictine perspective. And when I got done, it struck me that there were three words that the whole book could be boiled down to. The, the good, according to this book, a good spiritual life is based of, on three things. Being humble, being patient, and being non-judgmental. And ever since I wrote, read that book, I have incorporated that into a prayer that I pray for me. Not for you, but just a prayer for me every time I pray. Lord, help me to be humble and patient and non-judgmental. And I even pray this in that chair every time before I come up to preach. Lord, as I preach, help me to be humble, not to be cocky or arrogant. Help me to be connected with this word, right? Help me to be patient. And so that's what I prayed. You can use those things for yourself, but you can also just look in the mirror and say, well, who do you want to be? What kind of person do you want to become? Last week at our Even Song, if you didn't get a chance to come to that, it was wonderful. But there was a reading right here from the lectern, and one of the poems said, we are all on a journey of becoming, whether we choose to or not, and that is so true. So the question is, who do you want to become? What fruit of the Spirit do you want God to cultivate in you? Do you want to be more kind? Do you want to be more empathetic, more generous? Incorporate that into a prayer for yourself. And I also use my calendar a lot, almost daily. Uh, I look at the thing, or I think about the things that are coming up on my day, and I, and I incorporate that prayer for myself into my calendar. Lord, I know I have a meeting at 4 o'clock today. Help me to be humble and patient, non-judgmental in that meeting. In this conversation, help me to be humble and patient. That's what I do. And maybe, maybe that speaks for you too. But ask God to help create in you some uh, person that is, that is driven by the fruits of the Spirit. And lastly, a, a check in time with God should have some concern for others. Our faith draws us outside of ourselves and not just in, inward, into ourselves. And so, Having some concern for the needs of others around us is always important. So in your, in your journal, on those five lines for each day, you can also pray for five people. Who are the people that are moving through your mind on a day-to-day -day basis, moving through your hearts? Write them down and pray for them. How do we pray for them? Well, chances are some of those names on your, on your five lines will be people that you love. I'm guessing. Probably will happen. And then the prayer is easy. God, thank you for giving me this person in my life. Maybe there'll be a name, though, that shows up on one of those five lines, and that, that is, represents a person whom it is hard to love. And maybe you've come across that in your life. And the prayer in that situation is not, Lord, help them to be more like me. Right? That's a temptation. That's the human clutter that we want to move away. But the prayer is more, God, help me see in them what you see in them. Or, God, what do you want to reveal to me about them and learn from them that would help me love them more? Something like that. So we could talk for weeks about prayer. But I think this is a good way to start on our spiritual exercise journey. If we think of prayer as 10 minutes, as a daily check-in with God in a quiet place, deserted, secluded, noise-free, where we can be open to God, giving thanks to God, Asking God to cultivate a, a more desirable person in ourselves from a divine perspective and praying for the world around us. This is the kind of thing that moves us into people who pray into praying 
people. Let us pray. God, thank you for always being available for us whenever we check in with you. And may you inspire each of us this week here to strive to commit to that check-in with you. And may we see over time the benefits of that check-in. In your holy name we pray. Amen.